What is up? Today we're gonna be code battling some other people. So there's this multiplayer game online, it's called Clash of Code, and how it works is a group of people are all given a problem at the same time and they have to solve it in one of three modes. So the mode is selected at the beginning of the round and it's gonna be either fastest, shortest, or reverse. In fastest mode, we have to find the solution as fast as possible. In shortest mode, we have to code up a solution using as few characters as possible. And in reverse mode, they just show you the inputs and the outputs, and you have to figure out a function that maps those inputs to those outputs. Let me just show you how it works. So before working at Google, when I was practicing for the coding interview, this is one of the things I would do. I'd play coding games online, and you kind of get used to working under pressure, and you also can learn from other people's code when you look at their solutions. Reverse mode. All right, so given five and two, the output is two. Looks like we have to output the lowest answer. If m is less than n print m, else print n, Boom. The W. All right, that one was pretty easy. Usually they're a little harder than that. Let's try it again. All right, here we go. All right, mode fastest. Your program must output the facial comp composite of a wanted criminal from the description of a witness given to you in the form of ASCII characters. The description consists of one character for the hair, one character for the size of the face, one character for the eyes, one character for the nose, one for the mouth, a string of one, two, three, or five characters for the chin, each item separated by a space. Do not include a trailing sp white space after the chin. Input string, hair, cheek, eyes, nose, mouth, chin, for a composite of five lines and five columns. The chin must be centered. So, let's go print hair times five. Print, we're gonna call this cheek C. C plus, chin must be centered. Oh. Can't multiply sequence by non-int of type float. Oh, don't include trailing space after the chin. Okay, that's it. Okay, got it. Let's submit it. Whoo! <laughs> that was... <sighs> we created a guy's face. <laughs> I don't know if this is the best coding practice, but it's kind of fun. Let's battle again. Got another W under the belt. Shortest mode. Your program must output the input word after shifting its letters. Letters whose index would be negative are placed at the end of the word. The shift amount can be greater than the length of the word. In that case, it loops. So we're given N and word, and we have to shift word to the left by N. That should be easy enough. So we'll divide n by the length of the word and get the remainder. And then we'll print word n plus word 2n. So this will print the last part of the word and this will print the first part of the word. And it works. So now we gotta try to reduce it down to as few characters as possible. All right, I think that's my solution. I'm gonna go for it. We'll see how it does. So far, it's the best solution. All right, so we ended up winning that one as well. Let's go again. All right, we got a shortest mode. Here we go, call a number num strange if there is such a number x. So if you perform the operation x to the power of x plus x, you will get num. In the problem, you must check if a number is strange. So the num will be within two to the 32. So what's 
32 to the 32 to the 0.5. All right, so we have to go through 65,000 numbers. Process has timed out. That's taking too long. Let's try if num divisible by x continue. So that should work. All right, we got the code down to 73. I'm gonna see if I can get it even smaller. All right, guys, I got it down as small as I can get it. 69 characters. What it's basically doing is looping through X through the range one to nine to the power of five, which is a little less than two to the 32 square rooted and it is checking if x to the power of x plus x equals n, and if so, it'll set this to true. If not, it'll set it to false, and this is pretty much saying if n isn't divisible by x, then don't run this. So I'll save time, and I gotta submit my score because we only got seven seconds left. Boom. Share my code. All right, let's see how someone else did it. 96 characters. For i in range num, if i times i plus i is greater than or equal to num. So a similar solution, but not very compacted down into a list comprehension. And actually that didn't solve it all the way. All right guys, we got one more battle. Let's make it a good one. Reverse mode, A, B, C, put in B. O N P K What is this? Madness. A B C. I thought it was the middle letter. Q W R O J A N. K. All right, let's just try testing things. K L M N O P Q R S T. Let's make a list. The expected P. Hmm. Upper. All right, this is a weird one. But I think it's it. Boom. All right, we just won that last one as well. So to explain what was going on in that last one, there was a sequence of characters and when there was all the characters there, it was just the middle character. But when the characters weren't in a normal sequence, it was some character that wasn't even in that sequence. So I thought maybe it had to do with the ASCII value of the character. So maybe you take all the ASCII values of the characters, take the average, and then convert that back into the ASCII character of that value. And that actually solved most of them except for the last one. And then I noticed that all the outputs were all uppercase. So I thought, okay, maybe it's first converting all the characters to uppercase and then taking the average ASCII value of those characters. And when I made that change, all the tests worked. So it was a shot in the dark and it turned out to be the solution. All right guys, so after that last win, I am up to ranked 58th out of 106,000 on the site. Maybe I'll play some more later and see if I can get that rank even higher. But I wanted to give you one more resource for practicing coding, especially for technical interviews, and it's Cracking the Coding Interview. This was my favorite book of all the books I read preparing for the Google interview that I took. And it goes over a lot of the theory and gives you a lot of really good challenging problems for you to struggle with. And then it'll give a solution in the back of the book that will tell you how it works and explain the process. And this book is by Gail McDowell. And she also has some videos online on YouTube. You can just search for Cracking the Coding Interview 
And one of my favorite videos with her is actually on Vimeo. I'll link to it in the description. It's called Cracking the Coding Interview with Danny. And she goes through the whole process of a coding interview and she gives good feedback of what he did well and what he could do better. I definitely used some of these tips in my interview and it helped. So that's what I got for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.